Ashley Fox on top of global growth concerns from coast to coast. And I'm Charles Payne in for Neil Cavuto. The U.S. economy is seeing its worst economic recovery since 1949. In the Eurozone, not doing much. Same sort of anemic growth, 1.2 percent. Yet Hillary Clinton promising major changes, saying uh, that uh, the policies being implemented right now, she's, she likes them. They're, they're working. You're offering tweaks, not a dramatic shift. Well, I think what I'm offering uh, are proven uh, results. I think what I'm offering is that we can build on where we are. We've dug ourselves out. We're standing, but we're not yet running. I'm not happy with the status quo. I've said that repeatedly. Conservative commentator Gina Loudon, market watcher Scott Martin, and Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein. Uh, Gina, your thoughts? Yeah, well, you know, Hillary has no plan whatsoever to improve anything for small business. The only thing that she's even mentioned is more government jobs. But the question that the American people need to ask themselves, Charles, is if they complete the government job, you know, if it's infrastructure or whatever, what happens when those jobs go away? The only real jobs in this country that supply an economy long term, as you know, are jobs that are in the private sector. And Hillary has no answer, no comment on that even. <clears throat> You know, Richard, uh, the numbers are hard to dispute. Um, the worst uh, post-recession recovery in history by very a lot of measures. The only thing I would give uh, the Democrats, if you want to take it, it's the fourth longest recovery. But some people say that's because it hasn't been a good recovery. You know, I hope this election, uh, Charles, is a competition between Democratic and Republican economic policies. Uh, again, you've heard me say this, Bill Clinton, and let's give Newt Gingrich some credit, um, 23 million jobs created, most robust economic growth of all time. Barack Obama, 76 straight months of private sector job creation. George Bush, biggest economic collapse of all time, in some respects, worse during that six-month period than the Great Depression. So yes, let's have that contest. Hillary Clinton would have that every day of the week. And incidentally, I'm sure you're going to mention the 10,000-point improvement in the stock market and the, the halving of the unemployment rate and so forth, right? We're going to give you President know, Obama Scott, some credit, right? Scott, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, even with that uh, worse uh, period for uh, George Bush that Richard brought up, his eight years still produced better annual GDP growth than President Obama. So that does say something. Yeah, and Charles, nor did he rack up the, the deficits that, that Obama has either. So that's the other problem here. I mean, you can take statistics and take them a lot of ways. I mean, I could argue, Richard, a lot of the reasons that we had that economic collapse was because of what Clinton passed with regards to the housing market back in the 90s. I mean, that's where everything kind of started. So I agree. You know, Gina talked about it. Uh, Clinton doesn't really have any plans, and that boggles my mind considering that you have income inequality that's at modern-day records as far as uh, dis discrepancies there. You have economic quality of growth that's not there. Yes, the jobs numbers are there, but the job quality is not there. So for, for Clinton to say that she's going to do these minor tweaks in this economy is crazy to me because it obviously needs a lot of changes. Gina, I mean, as far as I can tell, uh, the, the progressive movement, which Hillary's moved even further left, is all about the idea that there's a lot of money sloshing around out there and just a handful of people have it, and we're going to take it from them. And, and I really think if we listen, and I've been listening closely, Hillary Clinton wants the American public to give her the power to actually go on corporate balance sheets, to go on corporate income statements, and take this money and redistribute it. Well, Hillary should know a lot about that because Hillary herself has made hundreds of millions of dollars from the Clinton Foundation, got her own daughter a job on Wall Street for a million dollars. I mean, she knows a lot about, about wealth, but the thing is that Hillary and her progressive left have taken from the middle class for generations. Look at what has happened to blighted areas around the country, Charles, as we've dumped uh, it's so incredibly much money. We've doubled the debt under this administration in, in an effort to quote unquote fix the problem when the problems for these these classes of people have only gotten worse. So if progressive policy worked, Charles, we would see some progress. But the bottom yeah. line is we haven't seen it. Their policies don't work. Richard, uh, you know, income inequality is, is sort of the bailiwick, if you will, of your party. Yet the places where the Democrats have been in control the longest are the places where income inequality is the worst. Isn't that an indictment against the whole thesis? Well, income inequality is definitely something that needs to be addressed. But I, I hate to tell Gina and Scott something. The U.S. economy is the envy 
of the developed world. Yes, has the recovery been what anybody wanted? No, and that's what Hillary's saying. But she's, in, in contrast to putting up walls and discriminating against people and keeping out of the country, she's talking about helping people with job creation, with um, paid family and medical leave, with child care, with education, college costs, and so forth. That's what she's actually offering well, to do, and she pays spending? for it all. She pays for it all. She pays for it all, Gina. Look, just look at we all the... We strapped it to the, the backs of our children. $19 trillion in debt. What are you going to do about that? You can't just keep borrowing from our children and grandchildren. You can't well, do it. I'm, at all, some point, I, you have to draw a line. That's true. And yet, all I can tell you is the, the biggest organizations in D.C. that are bipartisan, nonpartisan, that look at debt issues, they are freaked out. By well, Donald Trump's proposals will, be, between tax and spending. Everybody, say not this one second, guys. You know, Richard, you, I think you make a great point about us doing better than the developed world, which is the cautionary tale, because they've gone down this path a lot sooner or further than we have. Maybe we want to put the brakes on. Guys, we know the economy is in the forefront, but interesting, Hillary Clinton trying to move on to, uh, from, from her email saga. Critics uh, accusing her of downplaying what FBI Director Comey said about her server. Take a listen. FBI Director James Comey said none of those things that you told the American public were true. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, in my view, clarify. Director Comey said that my answers were truthful and what I've said is consistent with what I have told the American people. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. Secretary Clinton three, said, three, I did three, not three. email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? No, there was classified material emailed. Secretary Clinton said she used just one device. Was that true? She used multiple devices. Secretary Clinton said all work-related emails were returned to the State Department. Was that true? No, we found work-related emails, thousands, that were not returned. All right, so the Washington Post saying uh, she's mincing Comey's words, giving her a score of four Pinocchio. Scott, uh, does it really show how bad things are when she's actually going to focus on emails above the, above the economy in this election? Yeah, I mean, you know, Charles, this story has been going on and on, and unfortunately, I, I think the resolution of it was not one that, that a lot of us thought we'd get to. I mean, if you just remember back to, to Comey's press conference, you know, there was this great combination of, I think, how Hillary Clinton handled this whole situation, but there were all these, 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 these qualifiers that Comey threw out with, but we don't think it was a severe enough offense to prosecute or bring her in further. And I mean, that's the whole problem here, is like, there's a clear issue that she did with this email server, yet we didn't go far enough to take it to where she actually served some punishment for it, which to me was totally disingenuous to the American people. She kind of got a gift over the weekend, Richard, <laughs> but the email saga not going away, particularly when uh, we're promised more, more really ugly things coming out of the, the last few tranches. Well, I, I will tell you this. If, if we're concerned about things being released, the person who has most to be concerned about is Donald Trump somehow having his tax returns released. Do you think there's a single viewer of yours, Charles, who doesn't believe in their soul that Donald Trump's tax returns would be so damning as to perhaps, like, run him out of this race altogether? And so you're, talking, Hillary, so you're, you're comparing someone who's a private citizen to someone who was Secretary of State who, I'm, may, who, I'm may saying, have, who may have left enough critical information vulnerable that uh, people who work for us who put their lives in on, on, on the line may right. have their lives compromised. You're going to compare and, and those two. And I'm saying this was an espionage statute, which Comey said has not been prosecuted in 99 years. There are people who have addled thinking about Hillary Clinton. I don't think there's a single one of your viewers who thinks that she purposely went out to commit espionage. And that's the statute that your, your, um, your well, panelists yeah, are but, saying that she violated. Gina, you know what? I, I think there's some, some talk that that's not necessarily the statute. You know, whether it was deliberate or not, the point is that most people do in their heart of hearts believe she did leave it vulnerable and that maybe the Russians or someone else got a hold of it. But that being said, yeah. uh, you know, it's not going to go away. How about if Hillary Clinton releases the books from the Clinton Foundation, which undoubtedly will unveil her relationship with Russia and other countries that she's taken hundreds of millions of dollars from, lined her own pockets and that of her family and friends, and then maybe Donald Trump will release his big tax thing that he said, by the way, he will relax, release in due time in total Donald Trump style. Uh, but Hillary is unwilling to even discuss releasing the books from the Clinton Foundation. That's what I want to see. Scott, they're talking about going open kimono all the way 
away. Everyone, just let it all out. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty gross. It sounds pretty gross if we go that far. But you know, let's keep it to, to books and records here. But you know what's funny is, I mean, if you look back at what, what Hillary's done through this whole time, it's been lies and cover up and lying to the FBI, lying to authorities, and hiding all this stuff. To have it come out later and get exonerated is absolutely crazy. Everybody should be upset about that. Uh, you know, I can all I can tell you, Richard, since we started talking about Hillary's emails, the market's just been going down, down, and down. Uh oh. <laughs> but really, honestly, it's it's one of these things. I'm telling you. I mean, if you listen to Julian Assange and all these other folks, I know within your party there's a seriously deep concern about what may come out, what could be an October surprise, and it is probably a pressing issue that we maybe maybe they could come forward and tell us what what's missing. Maybe they could do that. Yeah, you know what? Let's take the foundation as an example of the, the so-called fear about what's coming out. The Clinton Foundation uh, raises money and addresses AIDS, malaria, climate change, childhood obesity, women's empowerment. The Trump Foundation raises money and spends it on a Tim Tebow signed helmet. Excuse me. I would love to have that be the, something that is the subject of debate and have the American public decide who has merit on their side and who is basically misusing um, money that's going into well, a foundation. Hundreds of millions of dollars I'll have that debate every day. poured into the Clinton Foundation, and I'm sure the American public would love to know where every single dollar went. And meanwhile, guys, uh, more cyber concerns for the Clintons. Blake Berman, he's here with us with the details. Blake. Hi there, Charles. Yeah, one cybersecurity expert told me earlier this morning that he is convinced in his words, that more information will be leaked that could be potentially damning, damaging for the Democrats' chances in November. Keep in mind, though, where we are at this very moment with this entire issue. The Democratic National Committee and the DCCC, which is the group supporting congressional Democrats, they've been hacked. It's already cost the DNC chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, her job. The Department of Justice is investigating. Russia is believed to be behind the breach, which, of course, Russia denies. So the question becomes going forward, what else tied to Hillary Clinton could potentially be exposed? Well, that cybersecurity expert, Brian Finch, is among the chorus which believes emails relating to her campaign and the family's foundation could be at risk as well. Here's what he told me earlier this morning, and I'm quoting here. He says, all of it is going to come out before the election, and it will be incredibly embarrassing. One person's opinion there. Over the weekend, Clinton would not say if she feels Vladimir Putin is purposefully trying to tilt the election Donald Trump's way, saying she, quote, is not going to jump to that conclusion. Of course, Charles, we need to point out in all of this, there is no direct evidence, at least publicly, that Russia or anybody else has more potentially damaging information. But as you just asked and have been discussing, that is one of the big question marks from here on out, heading into November. Blake Back Berman. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And of course, fears from within the Clinton campaign uh, that more information could be leaked from these hacks. And Richard, you know, I just asked about this. Um, so, so the, if there, there's no concern, is there some sort of responsibility, though, know, from Hillary Clinton's point of view, to sort of share more about those 33,000 emails? They are a topic of discussion. They're in a, you know, it's, it's part of people's decision-making process when it comes to November. Now, I think the public has made its decision, rightly or wrongly, and the people come down on both you mean sides about of it, the Charles. election? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Well, because if, if you, if you base this on trustworthiness, then, yeah, they've made the decision, and it's pretty damning for Hillary. Hillary Clinton made the point in her um, speech that you can trust her to go to bat for you if you're a middle American. If you're a working class person, you can trust her. Donald Trump was screwing contractors, screwing workers, getting out of uh, obligations when she spent her whole life going to bat for people. So honestly, I don't think, I, I understand people now that Trump's behind in the polls, and instantly I'm waiting for that whole part of his stump speech to be moved out. He can't talk about the polls anymore. Post, post convention, he's losing. Okay, and I don't think that's going to change until he tries to wiggle out of these debates. So I, honestly, I understand that you know this right. so-called concern. I don't think it's real. Gina, I, I mean, I, I'm thinking if I'm in a Democratic Party, I would be concerned. Uh, I, I would believe that these guys have a whole lot more information, whoever they are. Yeah, I definitely think that's true. And I think that you know, if if you're a Democrat right now, you either have to buy into a complete fantasy that this woman, Hillary Clinton, has your best interest in mind, or you have to face square on that you're going to have to vote for someone that you know willingly lies to the American people regarding their national security, even under oath. I mean, where is the bottom for Hillary Clinton? Where is the line that she's going to draw for the American people? And I think it brings you to motives. Why is she running?
running for president. I think if you look at her past, you know that it's crony capitalism. It's padding the pockets of her friends and family. I think Donald Trump's motivations are completely different from that. All right, guys, let's leave it there. Great panel. Appreciate it from all.